What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm really excited because one, it's the last day of Shark Week, but wait, that's kind of sad actually. I, I'm excited because I'm showing you guys a really cool deck and now this deck isn't a shark based deck. It still is a water based deck. It's a deck that is kind of in theme and I think it's insanely powerful. Now at the end of the video, I'm going to be showing you guys some combos and some test hands just because it's the end of the week and I really wanted to be able to show you guys a deck on top of what it can do, right? So I'm going to be showing you guys everything in today's video. Now if you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed Shark Week in general, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on the channel no we don't we upload 10 days on the channel we literally upload five long videos a week as well as five shorts a week guys we're putting out so much content for the month of february so make sure you guys subscribe to see all of that thank you guys all for watching the goal is 10,000. i know we can make it happen with your help and with that guys i don't want to keep you guys waiting so with that let's get right into the deck profile so for the last day of Shark Week here, I'm doing a deck that's not actually sharks. It's more focused around Kairushin over here. It's more of a fish water deck profile, but it fits the theme of the whole water thing. So we're sticking with this. And I'm really excited to be getting into this deck profile. Big shout out Chair. If you guys have ever seen Chair on the channel, I'm sure you guys have. He's the kind of guy who plays a lot of these decks. And this build right here is heavily inspired off of his deck profile. So with that being said, let's get right into the deck profile here. We are starting off, of course, with three of your Kairushin. This is kind of your boss monster of the deck. This card is insane because it's kind of like a Gozen match where your opponent can only control one non-water monster on their side of the field as long as Umi is on your side of the field. Now, why is that really powerful? That's because essentially when you're putting up this monster and your opponent commits any monster to the side of the field, they can't link summon, they can't summon more monsters, they're stuck with that one monster. So it's an absolutely crazy lock and this is your boss monster of the deck. The whole goal of this deck is to have this card on the field with Yumi and Yumi obviously is also going to count as Legendary Ocean I'll get to that in a minute, but pretty much as long as you have this card on the field, this is where your lock comes in and it's extremely powerful, all right? So we're playing three of the Kairushin, of course, as well as three electric jellyfish. Jellyfish essentially gets you into your Kairushin. If you guys don't know, during the main phase, you can send an Umi from your hand, deck, or face up on the field to the graveyard, and you can special summon a water monster from your hand. A lot of the time, if you have the Kairushin in your hand, this is what you're going to be special summoning. It's kind of like your boss monster. Now you guys might be wondering, but okay, if you have your Umi in the graveyard, then you're not even get the water lock off of this, right? Right? But this card also has another really cool effect that I'm going to come back to now, where during your main phase, you can add from your deck to your hand an Umi, a Kairushin Speller Trap, or a Sea Stealth Speller Trap. So a lot of the time, this card can get you to Yumi. If you already have one in your hand, then you can get to one of your Sea Stealth Speller Traps, and that's very powerful as well, right? So all of these cards synergize really, really well for each other. Electric Jellyfish is also really powerful because it's an Omni Negate for you on the board. Well, okay, it's not really an Omni Negate. It negates monster effects and spell effects. For some reason, it doesn't negate trap effects, and this deck can lose something like Evenly Match, which we are prepared for, don't get me wrong, but this card specifically negates monsters and spells, which is still very, very powerful. Prevalent. And then we're playing the one Gamma Seal. This is because it's searchable. Also, this deck does struggle a lot going second. So having a searchable Kaiju in the deck is very powerful. We also play some other cards so that we're able to go second. Even though you always want to go first with this deck, it does struggle when you're forced to go second and we want to be prepared for that. So I like the one Gamma Seal in the main deck. Then of course, we're playing three Fish Sonar. This card essentially is your Rota for the deck. You add a level seven or lower monster from your deck to your hand that mentions Umi or is a water normal monster. Now we're not playing any water normal monsters, but a card that mentions Umi is your Kairushin. Another card that mentions Umi is your Electric Jellyfish. So it's pretty much your Rota for whatever card you're missing in your combo. You have to be playing this at three. And then we're playing three Legendary Ocean. This card is always treated as Umi when it's on the field. On top of that, it gives your water monsters a boost of 200 attack and defense. And it reduces the level of all water monsters in both players' hands and field by one. So why that's really good is because your Kairushin in your hand is level five. But if you have this on the board, it becomes a level four. And now you can just normal summon your Kairushin. So the really cool thing about this deck is it all just synergizes extremely well which is really nice and it's very very consistent you know all of it searches each other the fish sonar searches whatever you're missing it's very very consistent it's very very powerful that's why we have to be playing the three by the way because the entire deck revolves around this field spell and you need to be able to have the field spell on your side of the field and then we're also playing one more field spell we're playing the necro valley necro valley is obviously really good into the tier limits matchup and it's really important that you play this in today's format and it's just another option for you if you don't have your legendary ocean on the field and even if you don't you're still going to be able to get 
get a lock on your opponent, especially against a tail limit matchup, where if you have the Necro Valley on the field, they can't really play anyway. So that's why this card is really powerful. We're playing one terraforming, of course, to either search your legendary ocean or your Necro Valley. And another card that searches your legendary ocean is Warrior of Atlantis. This card, you can just discard it from your hand to the graveyard and add a legendary ocean from your deck to your hand. So it gets you your legendary oceans, which is really, really powerful. It's pretty much like playing three terraforming in your deck here, which is really nice. Terraforming, if you draw and you don't have access to this, you want to go to this. But if you do have access to this already, you always want to search the Necro Valley. I just wanted to give another option for this deck that's still really important and really powerful in today's metagame. So that's why we're playing the Necro Valley. We're playing the terraformings essentially for the deck. And then we're playing one Sea Stealth Attack, one Sea Stealth 2. So I'm going to explain these two in just a second here. But the reason you're playing one on one is because your Kairushin is always going to be able to search it, which is really nice. Now, Sea Stealth Attack is an insanely powerful card. I'm going to read it out to you real quick. When this card is activated, you can activate a Yumi from your hand or your graveyard. Why that's really powerful is because your electric jellyfish is always going to be sending an Umi to the graveyard so that you can special summon your Kairushin. And then this card can be searched by your Kairushin. And then when you activate it on your opponent's turn, you can then play a legendary ocean to your side of the field, which is absolutely insane. But that's not even the best effect for this card. This card is really good in that sense, but it's also really good because at the start of the damage step, if a monster whose original level is five or higher, original, keep that in mind, and it battles your opponent's monster, that monster is now destroyed. So it always destroys your opponent's monster. It's your protection for your Kairushin over here. So you always want to keep this card on the board and you want to be able to protect it and see stealth attack lets you do that. And then on top of that, it even has protection for itself as well as your legendary ocean. You can banish a water monster you control until the end phase and then face up spells or traps you control cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects, which is really nice. So it's going to protect itself. It's going to protect your legendary ocean. It's going to protect your sea stealth too, which I'm going to talk about just now. So there's a lot of protection built in with this card and it's absolutely insane. It's MVP of the deck, of course. And then we're playing the one sea stealth too. This card is also really powerful because it becomes Yumi while it's on the field or in the graveyard, which is really nice because as long as it becomes Yumi on the field, it acts as another Umi for you in the graveyard. That means you can also activate it from your sea stealth attack because it counts as an Umi in the graveyard, which is really nice. Your opponent cannot target water monsters you control with non water monster effects. So that's really powerful because it's another form of protection for your Kairushin. Do you guys see how powerful this deck can be? This is why this is your boss monster. The whole point of this deck is summoning this monster and being able to protect it in so many different ways. You have battle protection now with your sea stealth attack. You have targeting protection with your sea stealth too, which is really, really powerful. And then we're playing the one ice barrier. This card, the main effect is not that powerful. The one that you're going to be using is the graveyard effect. If this card is in the graveyard, you can banish it and then you can send a level five or higher water monster you from your deck to the graveyard and then add a water monster from your graveyard to your hand. So the really nice thing about this is you can send your gamma seal and then just add the gamma seal. So it searches your gamma seal, which is really, really powerful. It also searches your jellyfish. It also searches your Kairushin. So this card is essentially a searcher for you. And to get this to the graveyard, we're playing two foolish barrier goods. So this is kind of like your consistency engine. You kind of just have more consistency in this deck or you just search a gamma seal, which is really, really nice. And then if you want to add even more consistency, I like playing three part of prosperity, being able to add a solemn judgment or something that protects your monster or protects your combo is very, very powerful. So I really like three pros. And then we're playing an engine that chair kind of gave to me and gave me this idea. And I was thinking it was really, really powerful and it makes a lot of sense. Keep in mind, Kairushin over here locks you and your opponent to controlling one non-water monster. So because all the monsters you're typically going to control are water, you can actually afford to play one non-water monster. What's the best one non-water monster this deck can put up? It's your Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. Why is this card so powerful? It's because it's an Omni Negate. It's setting up another form of disruption on your opponent's turn, but it's also setting up some kind of protection. So that's why I like playing the three Branded Fusion as well as one Albaz as well as one Goddess with the third eye. Having this Branded package adds another layer of disruption, another layer of protection, which this deck otherwise didn't have. So I really like this package. I actually think it's really, really powerful. It's something I never considered before, but I think now it just makes a lot of sense to be playing this package, right? And then, like I said earlier, we do struggle a lot to go second. You don't really need your battle phase in this deck. It's a control based deck. It's not an OTK based deck. So we're playing the evenly match. Evenly match is really powerful. When you are forced to go second, it's one of those things that helps you clear a lot of boards and it kind of helps you set up your own board, right? Because if you can evenly match a tier limits player or really any deck that sets up a big board, right? If you are able to evenly match and break their board, then you can set up your own board with your legendary ocean, with your Kairushin, and then your opponent's not going to be able to play through that because you're getting rid of a lot of their resources. And a lot of times if your opponent has something like an Omni negate or some form of disruption and you go evenly match, at least this way they're going to be using that Omni negate on the evenly match and then the other combos are going to be able to go through because you're getting rid of that Omni negate that you might otherwise not be able to play through. So I really like playing the three evenly matched. It makes a lot of sense. Again, this deck does struggle to go second. That's why we're playing the Gamma Seal. That's why we're playing the evenly matched. Another really good card to go second here is your Infinite Impermanence. Imperm, of course, is really powerful going first. You can set it. It's just a negate. But going second, it's a hand trap for you. So that's why I really like playing three Impermanence. And then we're playing three 
Solemn Judgment because like I said earlier, the whole point of this deck is to be able to summon your Kyrushin, activate your Legendary Ocean, and then protect this combo. Because as long as you can protect this combo, your opponent will really never be able to play around it. And so to protect it, we have the Sea Stealth, we have the Sea Stealth 2, we now have the Solemn Judgment, and this is really powerful because it's going to stop you from being evenly matched. This deck does lose pretty hard to evenly. So for that reason, you want to be playing the Solemn Judgment so you don't lose the cards like that. And Judgment in general is just a really powerful card because even if you're not using it to protect your cards, you're using it to disrupt your opponent. And then this way you can push for a lot of damage and pretty much take control of the game with this card. So you're playing three Solemn Judgment. And for the last card, we are playing the one Harpy's Feather Duster. I decided to play the one because again, this deck does struggle going second. If your opponent sets up a lot of back row or just any back row really that can disrupt your Kairushin, you really don't want that to be around. So I play the one Harpy's Feather Duster. It's a really good one of card in the deck. And I think it should be in a lot of people's main decks. So I just really like this card as a one of. And that's it for the main deck. It's 40 cards. And bro, when I tell you this deck is insanely consistent, it's so consistent right so i really like this main deck i don't think i'd actually change it up at all I'm, I'm really a big fan of this especially through testing and so that's it for the main deck i wouldn't change this up at all like i said moving on to the extra deck i'm gonna go pretty quick because nothing in the extra deck is actually that important there are cards you do sometimes go into but generally you're not focused around your extra deck outside of maybe one or two cards otherwise this extra deck is a lot of utility right so we're playing mistar boy we're playing eerie the water charmer we're playing the one anemone we're playing a dweller Baguska, you have Bahamut Shark, totally awesome. We have the Stealth Kragen as well as the Kragen Spawn. Again, these are all just utility cards that you can sometimes go into. To be honest with you, depending on your side deck, if you're choosing to play something like Winter Cherries for the Branded matchup, for the Sprite matchup, for the Koshtera matchup, then sometimes you can actually just play those Cherries targets in your extra deck, depending on what your side deck is, right? So keep that in mind. A lot of this is just utility. We're playing the one Grand Pulse over here as well as the one Zeus, just because we're playing so many Xyz monsters. So again, keep in mind, all of these cards are all just utility. If you can go into them, it's not bad. But most of the time, again, you're focused on these two, this combo, setting it up, and you're going to be winning the game. So yeah, this extra deck over here, all this can be changed depending on what you play. If you want to play Super Poly, that's another option for you. So that when you're forced to go second in games two, games three, you can be able to break boards so you can play Super Poly targets. I'm just giving you guys so many different options. This extra deck here is kind of just the generic extra deck of what you would be playing in a vacuum, right? And then we're playing the two Albion, the one Mirror Jade, as well as the one Red Eyes Dark dragoon again dragoon is the card that you're most of the time going to be going into when you're going into your kairushin because at least this way you have another form of protection but mirror jade is another option for you as well mirror jade is also really powerful because sometimes if you draw the albaz and keep this in mind right sometimes you will draw the brick even though these are the only two bricks in your decks i would say sometimes you will draw them unfortunately so for that reason if you do draw the albaz and you're playing against a deck that does have a lot of extra deck monsters on the side of the field at least you can normal summon the albaz and use it as a super poly to break your opponent's board and make mirror jade right so i like playing the one mirror jade as well as the one dragoon the reason we're playing two albion is because when we do go into mirror jade hard with branded fusion you need at least one more to send off of the mirror jade so you get a banish right so that's why i'm playing two albion one mirror jade and one dragoon outside of these four cards over here i would say the rest of it all can be changed up depending on what your side deck looks like but again the main deck is the focus of this deck and i think this deck is so powerful and a lot of people won't really know what's coming so because this is the last day of Shark Week and I'm not going to be able to show you guys combos and stuff with this deck, keep in mind it's not a combo based deck, but I just want to show you guys some test hands so you guys can see what the deck kind of performs right, right? So let's go here, test hand number one, you have Kairushin, you have Warrior of Atlantis here, which is really nice. Let's say we activate this, we get our Legendary Ocean, this way Prosperity, you know, we can see better cards here. Honestly, I you could just normal summon the Leviathan, you have protection. I mean, this is kind of crazy, I'll be honest with you, this hand is kind of crazy. If we go for six here, honestly, and we see a Branded Fusion, all right, okay, let's just go any six. It doesn't matter because we're just going to go... I just want to test it out. All right, let's go any six. If we see a brand infusion here, we're eating, to be honest with you. If we don't see a brand infusion... Oh, oh my God, bro. We saw the brand infusion. Okay, look. Look, look how crazy this board can be, right? Okay. So let's let's just start things off. Doesn't really matter what the order is here. But like this, this is the kind of hands that you'll see with this deck, which is absolutely insane. Alright, so let's go Branded Fusion. Let's go into Albion. Let's use these two over here. So we'll go into Albion. So we'll activate the Albion effect to summon the Dragoon. We're gonna use the Albion as well as the Goddess over here to summon the Dragoon. Then what we can do is activate Legendary Ocean. And then we can normal summon our Kairushin. And then now we have a water lock plus a Dragoon. And then we have Imperm as well as our judgment. Let's just set our judgment to protect our board and then we need a card in our hand for dragoon right boom this is just the most simplistic of boards i actually forgot to activate this let's say you activate the kairushin kairushin now can get you into something like ah, let's go see self attack you know what why not because just in case they have some back row hate to break the legendary ocean and you don't want to use the negate what you can do is just set this and now your opponent's turn you have protection for your face up field spells you have battle protection for your kairushin over here 
this this hand was crazy let's go let's go one more hand all right here you have another really crazy hand because you have uh your fish sonar you're pretty much going to be ending on a similar board you're not going to have the dragoon here but what you will have is honestly you already opened this so like i mean your hands kind of this hand's kind of crazy i'll be honest with you so like let's go electric jellyfish here activate the jellyfish we'll send this from our deck We'll be able to special summon our Kairushin. Keep in mind, you can actually summon Gamasil, right? We'll be able to summon this. We can go Kairushin effect. We can, I mean, add Sea Stealth Attack. We already have a Legendary Ocean in our hand. We have Necro Valley. I mean, depending, again, what uh, the board state is looking like. If you know you're going against Tier Limit players, what you can do, actually, let me just show you guys this. What you can do is you can set your Sea Stealth Attack and activate your Necro Valley, right? Now, they're not waterlocked at this point. You still have an Omni Negate with the Electric Jellyfish. They're not waterlocked here, right? But even though they're not waterlocked, what ends up happening is on your opponent's turn, you can actually flip the Sea Stealth Attack and you can activate Oyumi from your hand or graveyard, right? So why that's really powerful is because let's say you're not playing against tier limits, then you can just get rid of the necro valley that you don't need anymore or if your opponent has an out to the necro valley then you can just activate the legendary ocean from your graveyard and then you're setting up the water lock so you're setting up a graveyard lock here plus an omni negate or i, I keep saying omni negate it's monster and spell negate and then you're going to be setting up the water lock if you need to with this hand so i mean you guys can see for yourselves I i'm not going to say anything you guys can see it for yourselves so that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That's my take on Kairushin Control. I guess you guys can call it that, Kairushin Control. It's a very powerful deck because I think it's a really cool deck you guys saw from the test hands. It's very, very consistent. As long as you're able to set up your combo that your opponent can only have one non-water monster and any kind of traps or any sort of negations, then you're in a really, really good spot. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys did, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more YouTube content just like this one. Again, we upload 10 videos a week, bro. I'm spamming content for you guys. I'm giving you guys every form of content that you guys want to see. The five long videos, the five shorts a week. You guys are going to see it all. So I hope you guys enjoy it with that. Spanko, sign out. Peace.